Well here I am in my freshly painted garden studio. It's painted up all ready for uh, filming my up and coming online courses. And uh, But I thought I'd give it a break today um, and lead you through um, a lovely scene that I saw um, a few days ago. I went down to Haybridge Basin in Essex and uh, not far from where I live and uh, saw this lovely row of boats on the canal and thought, yeah, that uh, that looks like a lovely subject. So I'm going to lead you through the painting process. Enjoy. Okay, well I've um, pulled the drawing down to this uh, this scene. I think I've shown you, but I um, I'll show you uh, shortly. But that's the drawing. It's purely a boat, sailing boat, um, that's just pulled into the lock um, or the um, canal um, about, I don't know, a couple of three hundred yards down from the lock gate out into the open sea um, and um, I'm going to uh, show you how to paint it really. Now I've damped all my colours because it's quite warm in here so they need uh, loosening up um, so away I go. Uh, let's just lay that out. Good. Right, sky first. Let's just add on a fairly simple sky. Sunlight coming from the left. Uh, going to damp the paper. Quite warm in here as I say. Um, purely because it's quite a warm day today outside. Now I'm going to paint around the boats and the, the little lock up, little shed. Um, Little wooden uh, shed there and down as far as the water line. Apart from that all I've got to do now is put on colour. Now I've got to decide what colour to put on because it's quite important that we put the right um, depth of colour. Um, keep that nice and damp. I want a quite a clean colour. Um, well I'm going to start off with as I normally do a bit of um, red and yellow, cadmium red and cadmium lemon, just in this right hand side. A little bit of olizum crimson, there you go, look at that. Isn't that lovely? The way that floats across when the paper's damp. Can't beat watercolour for that. Really is um, something special. Right, now I've cleaned the brush and I'm going to use Windsor Blue. A bit of Windsor, that right hand corner, and create the illusion of um, clouds. A bit of cloud work there. Go, look at that. What about a little bit more Windsor in that area? There we go. A um, little bit of cloud work there. Notice I've dropped it in at an angle, so that's all um, all good. Now, something that I don't think I've shown you before. Put a drop in there. Um, I'm now going to use paper towel to lift away some clouds. Not very often I do this, but just feel to da the the day that was there it so like benefited from from that, and you'll see them more in the area another one there where it's really dark. There we go. It's begin to dry up there now, so just put a, a little bit more at the top there. There you go. Look at that. And that, just lift a bit of that off in the lower area too. It's beginning to blob a little. And there you go. That's all I'm going to do for the sky. Nice light sky, simply treated. Lifting off colour in the lower area just so it doesn't go to uh, run out of control. Right, now I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush. Paint in 
cobalt blue with raw sienna mainly cobalt blue because what I want to do is to create a mistiness to the distance leave those um, parasol so just use a semi dry brush just to lift away I don't want that running down into that area there we are so that's the distant very distant trees and I'm going to create a real bit of depth but so lots of blue going in just to give that extra little feel of depth really that's the main thing um, picking around the boats there good now as I work forward I'm going to add a little bit more raw sienna see the way I've produced um, a glint of sort of light clean the brush can use that brush just for lifting off gently there we are now I'm going to use a little bit of ultramarine with the raw sienna just to bring the changes a little bit of a different sort of feel to it all wet into wet now ultramarine cadmium yellow and this is going to be just the side of the brush to create these slightly darker trees as we come forward. That's it. And a little bit more ultramarine, a bit more yellow, and less water this time. So I want to have um, a bit of a different strata of tree there like that gradually drying nicely gradually drying just using this brush just to lift off again just so that it doesn't run in to any of the foreground areas there little lift off there other than that it's drying up very nicely um little um cobalt going in again just above that shed and it's going to be a little bit lighter at that point there we are just the, I think they have willows really but that's how I've depicted willows like that all very uh, suggestive all very misty gradually work, we're working into a drier area on the left and that is crucial because when we start to add a little bit more colour, you end up, you need the brush to open up to create texture. There you go, look at that. And all of a sudden we've created a little bit of texture there. And that gives us the illusion of trees that are much nearer and this one is going to be even darker with even more texture obviously we can darken now just before it dries which is a good thing to do um, let's bring that down the side of the boat there and perhaps at the bow of a boat or something going on there good so that's that now I can go back with ultramarine and or lizard crimson and this will give me my dark sides to these tree areas there we are a little bit of crimson uh, a bit more blue a bit of a darker patch there these are the shaded sides against the sunlit sides see the way I'm creating form and shape ultramarine um, it's a shadow colour really um, there we go look at that soft shadow colour that really shows off the boats very nicely there we are 
very soft distant background that's what I'm looking for that way it won't take away from the foreground boats once you start detail in the foreground in, in the distance then you'll lose the illusion of depth so that's why I've decided to keep it all nice and dry sorry all nice and wet uh, and there we have it it's about as far down as we can go I think let's just go a little bit further with that there sharpen that up but other than that that is the distant trees that I've got to now allow to dry while that's drying I'm going to stroke in with my large mop brush again going to stroke in the water now that's going to be just a straightforward greeny so like a greeny grey blue really blue green so I'm adding Windsor blue now to raw sienna this is going to be my base watercolour okay there's no real white there so let's just go in with that and I'm going on to dry paper um, and it's going to sweep right the way through like that there we are pick around these um, areas there that's it now I'm adding a little more blue as I come forward because it depicts the sky a little then and what I'm going to do I'm going to paint down trying to leave some spiky bits for our lighter sort of um, bit more there bit more there that's it for the lighter areas of the reed bed there we are and then a little bit more Prussian down in this bottom right hand corner but of course we will have also a little bit of red in there as well a little bit of red a little bit of yellow a little bit of orangey yellow because that reflects a little of the sky too and that is all you need to do allow that to dry off Well, that's dried off very nicely so let's start filling in um, a little of the uh, details well let's get that boat in I'm gonna get this lovely red and to me it's so sort of like it's a bit of crimson there it's also got cadmium red sometimes you do need two reds to actually um, Bit more cadmium perhaps yeah to give it that um that sort of red look when the uh, crimson and cadmium red let's see what we get from that okay now not worried too much at this stage uh, yeah that looks pretty much um what we're looking for there's ladders there at an angle so we might as well leave those um, unpainted um, just quickly put the cross sections in yeah that's, that's good enough for that um, now we're sweeping round the front of the boat there and that sort of finishes there Maybe just a little bead of white there there we are there's just a little bit of thickness there too good now funny enough cabin is that color as well just a life belt there that's white which um, um, is quite unusual there's a name there as well the name of the, of the boat presumably so we'll leave one two little white pieces un, unpainted 
and then we've got this canopy over the top like that like that stretches down there with presumably a couple of windows in there and a window in there which we will put in very shortly good so that gives it the rough shape really I suppose uh, quite red um, which is the idea of the whole thing um, right let's pick up a blue uh, let's go with the blue that's on the palette there plus cobalt so it's more or less some um, Prussian or Windsor blue and cobalt blue and we do the canopy of this one here with the window in the back like that and that just shoots forward like that with the window there and that cuts across there okay other than that it's white so that's uh, not a major issue now now we're going to do the large barge um, or the long barge um, that's a green so let's just it's like a funny green really so we'll need a red and a blue with perhaps a yellow to give us a funny green um, job to explain a funny green but so I've used raw sienna um, let's go a little different than the back let's use let's use winds of blue because I don't want to be the same the same um, color as the trees in the background so let's try this one yep there you go that looks pretty pretty useful and it's fairly high got a, quite a big stern there and then sweep through fairly quickly try and get a bit of light onto the bow of the boat like that shadows will come in later and then we'll add the first brown of the day, burnt sienna, to that mix to give me that sort of more browny green. And um, I'm going to use the same brush um, for the canopy over the top like that. Quite a quite a, an open canopy really, like that swings around there like that so that's pretty pretty simple there again I've left a little around the top edge allow us to put some highlights in and anything else we need um, in the background another green boat so we'll just bang in the blue we'll put a touch of cadmium with this just to give it a bit more of a green that's it more of a local green not too light like two yellowy green and this one is dark there so that will be shadowed off but this is quite light this side so and we've got some window areas there so uh, it's an arrow boat this all will be revealed when we come to paint that in and obviously the narrow boat itself will the hull will be quite dark I'll do that in a second um, then we've got sort of another blue canopy so ultramarine got to try and lose a bit of uh, not only color but also strength as we go away into the distance because um, oh, was a good thing to do actually it's another narrow boat with a canopy like that oh well we're not going to be too fussed on this and I'll put another blue boat in there um, that long because that I don't want to take up too too much interest so let's just put a dull color um, oh let's put a bit of red to that there we are just as a or, uh, sort of a color like that there we are so that just gives bit of interest in the distance with it that's just suggesting now as you go away into the distance it's all about suggestion and nothing to do with detail there we are good right let's uh, analyze and see what we've got 
Well, I want to move on fairly quickly now. Um, and we're going to do the cabin in the background. It stands up quite high. Uh, and for that, ultramarine and burnt sienna. Ultramarine, burnt sienna, dark. So like, it, it's a treated board. So it's got to be quite dark. Not too dark, because that's, you know, distant. But, um, and there is a bit of a, an edge around there. And it's also panelled, although we probably wouldn't see that. So just a suggestion of it. It's all suggestions. You know, um, once you start painting detailing, then obviously um, pick up the front of the, the bow of the boat there as well. So that's useful. And then it comes down into a, a reed area. So we'll just leave some little bits like that. And this side, the window there, it's going to be a little bit a bit lighter because it's, it's um, actually it should be darker, but it will be when I've finally produce that good okay that's good and a greeny gray very very weak for the roof like that so the roof I'll, I'll edge that up very shortly um, right now I'm going to use a small rigger no not yet um, let's look at the parasols on the right and the figures um, cobalt blue um, yeah, cobalt blue. Let's see, I need something with that. Perhaps a touch of red. A touch of cadmium red. Cobalt blue, cadmium red. There we go. That's more the blue that I'm looking for. More or less a pinky blue. There we are. Doesn't matter if you still have a bit of that other blue in there. That's worked well. That's okay. Fairly light. We can show some detail onto that shortly. Lift a bit of that damp there. Lift a bit of that away. And then there is a pinky one. Ah, oh, right. So let's take a bit of red and uh, produce a pink version of that uh, parasol there which is runs down there like that boy give it a bit more angle there there we are good so that just helps balance a bit of the red from one side um, okay take the slightly smaller round now and I will paint in the shed and that will be ultramarine and this time burned umber we want a slightly darker treated wood color we're getting there it's um and it's got a light sort of barge board there and just leave a bead of white there I don't want too much interest as it runs out of picture there is a door opening there now this will show whoop there that's running up into that let's just pull it down there we are and there is a figure there so we've got to go around that figure like that just as simple as that leave another figure's head there and just leave one or two little white touches I um, think that's probably done it really. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then we have sort of like a greeny blue. Greeny blue for these banisters or the, the railings. Be fairly dark. Um, grey blue. So it needs a, a red and a yellow in there then to c create grey. Okay. Bit of cadmium. There we go. There we go. There's all sorts of colours going in there. 
Here we are. That's the railings. There and along there. Not desperate. We get those railings perfectly. Um, probably would have another post there, one would presume. Run that right out of picture. Okay. Let's allow that to dry. Now we're going to put in a bit of detail now with the rigger. Um, fenders, um, varying bits and pieces like that. And they can be almost any colour really. Um, so onto that I'm going to put a fender there. And another one there. I don't think there is one there but let's just put that in. Um, oh, and we've got some dark brown fenders on this one. So I'm using the burnt sienna, sorry, burnt umber. And these are quite large, obviously being a large vessel. They need to be quite, quite chunky. Whether there's one at the back or not, but uh, well, there's one, two or three, but there you go. Um, with this same mix, I'm going to put in a bit of railings at the front of that boat like that so as suggested all right and any more browns just put some browns in um all oh, right yep along the side there of the barge and over the top there you go uh, i've not done the cabin there yet so let's deal with that all oh, now we get to the dark um, quite blue, um, too dark, uh, for the steel hull of the narrowboat. There we go. They normally stand quite well up at the front, so quite well into the water. Don't get a lot of hull with a narrowboat. And what else we got? Blues, a bit of blue, ultramarine again um, for the edging around there, up there. And that's it. It's pretty good, pretty good. Uh, not too much, you know, it's, it's coming along quite nicely. Um, it's mainly details now. Um, Good. Right, glazed areas. Blue. So there's a glazed area there you can see through. Glazed area there. Nice and blue because we're getting sunlight hitting those glazed areas. Or one there. Just just use a, a fairly dull blue really. Uh, oh, the windows in the in the cabin there. Um, you know, they're all pretty much um, easy to paint, really. You know, nothing too um, too detailed, really. You know, put a bit of detail into that. Don't know what that is, but we'll leave it white. Could be another boat behind the barge. And, of course, the barge... We'll have a nice opening in the back like that. Here we go. Lovely opening in the back. And it's just hinting at one or two little touches along the top there. Um, and also along here. Two windows like that. Good. We'll leave that white, I think. It isn't white, but we'll leave it white. Looks quite nice. Very dark now for, well no, let's just go light, for the glazed area. A blue again for, for the glazed area there, so let's use blue for that. Um, I would have gone dark if it had have been a light building, but because it's a, it's a dark building, I've gone light with the window. Okay, right. Let's have a look at the figures. Now they don't require um, too much interest. 
So I'm going to paint the arm of that one, the arm of that one. There we are. We're talking brown hair. That's easy enough, burnt umber. And that figure is looking away from us. So that will work like that. Now I'm continuing with the um, with the figures here, and uh, just putting putting in a bit of a low area there for that figure sitting, um, presumably on a bench somewhere about there. That comes around like that, and we'll put the bench in, and we'll do some little fiddling around there. A dull green again for that figure there. There we go, and that really is, you know, it, it's no need to be too, you know, it mustn't be too, um, too detailed, that's the thing, let's just take a little moisture off of that brush, just so as we can get, we'll take a little moisture off of that brush, that's better, and that will just lift away a little bit of paint. Good. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Just get some more tissue just to make certain I can lift away paint easily. That's just got to be a little lighter than the background. There we go. Um, okay, then. Uh, oh, foreground greens. Well, pretty simple. Cadmium yellow. Prussian blue. Nice bright sort of green. And we use a dry brush technique for that, like that, to give the reed bed look. And those little white areas that I've left all help to give that impression. Just like that. And then we cut back in. There we go. Uh, a little bit more paint on the brush. This is where we then shoot up with the reeds around that area there, a little bit darker. Got to remember the reeds don't all go at the same angle. And quite dark too in places. Now down in this bottom right hand corner. So, but of course we've got some lovely lights too. So that's always important to allow some white paper. So I'm just scratching across the, the paper, really. Okay, and while we're there, I'm going to put in some little touches of red. Not too many. Because I want that not to attract the eye, but to feel in the foreground. Just to bring the changes, a little bit of different texture there. Good, it's just detail and reflection. Let's get the masks in. Although the, the mask is white, it will appear shadowed against the against the light sky. So let's get that in. Um, it'll be a bit careful with this. I haven't got my um, my favourite uh, mool stick but don't think that's gonna um, I always use a brush that doesn't hold too much paint like that good and then this is going to have so sort of like a bit of capping and a bit of something going on up the top and then of course you've got the the varying sections a bit darker down there and just show through one or two little touches here and there just got to put in some nice red for that for the rolled up sail 
there onto the boom there. That's it. That'll be fine. And other than that, we just pull that in like that. And just put in some detail, really, little hints at one or two little things going on there. Same there. There you go. Shadow time. Finally, it's shadows, then water reflection. So let's put in the shadows first. Um, I'm going to use Winds of Blue and Olizarin Crimson. Um, a bit more blue than crimson. I want to have a nice, wants to be nice shadows, but don't be too strong. And because um, I want to get the, the light of the day. That's a little on the strong side, so let's tone that back a touch. There we are. That's that. That's that there. Tucked under there. That's good. A bit over the top there. Cabin area would be in shadow, so with that section there. And it's all shadows that these shadows really make a big difference. There we go. All of a sudden they come into, into sends it all into life really. That there apart from the windows across there. All of a sudden bang. A little bit darker with that. Shows it nice and thinly round there. And we also want some dark areas within this bank too. Vital that we put some dark areas within there like that. And a little bit there. All helps to um, leave some light obviously. All helps to give a bit of depth to the whole thing. Good. Now on there. We need shadow there, shadow on under the sail, but screwed up on the on the name at the side there. Um, under the we've got the that um, white um, life belt inside there I think that's right in doing that but perhaps it isn't so if it isn't right just lift it off there we are that's right now um so that's that good cabin there no problems with that there there good that's a little bit down there don't overdo this you know no need to um to overdo too much of this here. There we go. I'm leaving on two little bits of light. Now there, the parasol, that little area there, a bit lighter there, and a little bit lighter there as it comes round. There we are. So that just shows the parasol and then you used to use a damp brush just to soften it through. There we are, and same this side here, a bit of shadow there, a little bit coming down there. There we are, all very easy to do, all very easy to depict. A little bit on the figures, a bit more blue in there for the figures. Like that underneath there. Down there, down there, and down there. Put there like that. Shading on the figure there. There we are. Yes, suggestion. A bit of shadow here and there. Not really depicting anything, really, but um, it's just a 
depiction or a and a little dark in this bottom right hand corner all helps to give a bit of interest a bit darker there just so holds in that side or one that large board there's got to be darkened up um, a little bit there underneath there a little bit under there you just put a ridge tile so you see where the where the top of that comes good finally the water reflection now I'm going to go wet on to dry to start with with a green quite a bluey green fairly dark so there's a green there wet on to dry so you can get a bit of rippling and I always paint across like that because I feel that gives us the required sort of feeling a bit there a little bit there good so that's the green and we may as well use that for um, the sails of the boat now I'm going to use this um, or the moss basically break it up because it's always a good thing to do like that just suggestion right now put some red with that a bit more red and this is the shadow for the boat or oh, sorry the reflection for the boat we'll do the dark side first give a bit of rippling that's it Look at that. then we're going to use the grey blue for there quite dark for the reflection same there it's gone a little bit darker than the barge themselves and a little bit there and then this is going to be lighter there and there and a little bit just to combine the two together just show where they sit in the water really particularly along there now this is a grey green so let's go very very light green with this and I mean light and this is very very light red probably a bit of, a bit of sparkle to this go and oh don't forget the green again for that one there that's got to be only suggested really that's not go good 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 almost there then well there's the subject in hand the lovely boats on the canal at Haybridge Basin and that's my finished work um, I think it's come off quite well just open that up just a touch more so you can just see the surround but I think that's come off um, pretty good I'm quite happy with that now I've put them in I'm going to extend them a little further with some lighter stuff Because there is some distance, of course. Distant uh, trees, what have you, going on. A bit there. Don't get too wild with these. Because you don't want them to over. Now, we're not talking about a, um, a sea. It's only a reflection of the water 
then I'm going to go to like blue again to try and pick up the feeling of uh, sort of like foreground ripples like that. Always useful to have the odd little dark area within this corner there. There we are. That looks like water to me. Just one other thing we need to put in. Um, we use a rigger for this. I'm going to paint in a bit more water there. The um, we do have quite a quite a distinct area there, which is where the front sail is rolled up. So obviously. That in turn has to have an area like that. Other than that, I'm just going to finish off with some real darks just to line everything up, particularly along the bottom edge there. There, there we go, look at that. And that more or less. I think does it. There we are. See so I'm just lining little oddments up along the back there. One or two little touches there. It's just as I say suggesting all of whatever's going on but not losing too much of the light. That's the key with these um, with these pictures. Um, use too much, lose too much of the light, and um, there you go. Just rub that through. Look at that. Quite easy, really. A little bit more skipping of the brush down in this bottom right-hand corner. But other than that, right-hand side of the parasol there. Uh, one or two little touches there, there and there, just to define where where that finishes. There we go, one or two little touches on the figure. Not interested in the figures to any great extent. Really more about the boat itself. Okay, let's remove the surround. Well, there we have it. That's my take on this lovely canal not far from where I live. And I'm going to sign up. Bottom right hand corner. In the uh, in my usual sort of um, way with the paint that I've used like that so that's Haybridge Basin that's the Blackwater navigation about 300 yards in from the um, the lock gate that goes out into the open sea uh, I hope you've enjoyed that if you have stay tuned and please subscribe to my YouTube channel because I will be uploading many more again uh, click on the link bottom right hand corner and we will see you all again very very soon. Thank you for watching